well good morning welcome to achita academy for life sciences in this video i will be discussing urine formation so urine is composed of water in addition to water it is composed of urea uric acid oxalates sulfates phosphates chloride right sodium being close it also includes some of the water soluble vitamins like vitamin b complex and c c vitamin vitamin c and some of the b complex vitamins are also there sometimes depending on glucose will also be there right so these are the components of urine under normal conditions it is yellow in color <coughs> so ph is right remember when it comes to the ph it is almost 6 slightly right acidic ph is 6 right above all this also contains another compound creatinine this creatinine is <coughs> derivative of muscle contraction right this creatinine is used as an indicator it is used as a marker for diagnosis of kidney functioning itself right mootramlo <coughs> water urea uric amlam oxalates right sulfates chlorides sodium phosphates vitamin c b complex vitamins hippuric acid ivi kuda untayi ante vitito paatu asadharana paristhitullo pala ante let's suppose in case of diabetes glucose will also be there called as glycosuria or ketosuria fructosuria sometimes a protein will also be there albuminuria albumin in urine hematuria blood in urine right these are some of the pathological conditions so under normal conditions this is the composition of urine remember more than 99% of the urine will be reabsorbed again almost on average that would result in formation of 180 liters of primary filtrate or urine as the glomerular filtration rate is 125 ml per minute per day this would result in almost 180, 180 liters but again <clears throat> more than 99% is reabsorbed on average daily 1.5 to 1.8 liters of urine will be excreted remember the human urine itself is having 1200 milli osmolar the normal concentration of the right uh, blood is 300 milli osmolar means almost a human being is excreting four times concentrated urine than his blood itself how is it possible right there are some organisms that excretes uh, uh, urine almost uh, with 9300 milli osmolar right this is very peculiar right uh, hopping mice an organism by name hopping mice excretes an extraordinarily hypertonic uh, urine to its body composition 9300 milli osmolar similarly vampire bat bat these vampire bats usually feed on blood of primates and animals birds etc that this vampire bat excretes almost 4600 milli osmolar urine itself it means they excrete the urine that is more concentrated in order to conserve the water itself there is a necessity to conserve the water always because without water you cannot expect life itself so all the biochemical activities itself are, requires water it is a solvent universal solvent itself when it, right in order to conserve water there is a necessity so therefore even in case of human beings the concentration of urine is almost 
400 sorry four times to the concentration of the blood itself this is achieved by a method by name counter current mechanism itself counter current multiplier counter current exchange counter current exchange multiplier mechanism in gills right in gills of fishes there is cross current exchange of oxygen right these are aquatic organisms when they move in the water so the dissolved oxygen get diffuses into the hemoglobin of the erythrocytes of fish itself they are in opposite direction fish itself moves against the water direction even the water enters into the mouth via gills it moves via gills and out when the arrangement of gills is exactly opposite to the direction of the water current therefore there is a counter current they are exactly in opposite direction during this time diffusion of oxygen occurs even extremities of our body parts like your fingertips or for example your ear they are usually extremities of limbs are also involved in counter current heat exchange where some amount of heat get exchanged into the environmental conditions as a part of thermo regulation in the body itself remember counter current is not a new term counter current means flow counter current means flow in opposite direction this is a strategic arrangement in organisms itself so as a result of this strategic arrangement or arrangement of <coughs> sorry but the strategic arrangement of nephron ascending and descending loop and vasa recta this could be possible excreting concentrated urine is possible just because of arrangement of these loop of henle right this is descending and again this is in ascending manner the flow of blood or the current itself the movement of right the fluids is in opposite direction for example in descending limb the flow will be always in this downward direction whereas this is in upward direction there is an opposite right as a result of this system strategic arrangement these flows these right of movement is exactly in opposite direction the current that is movement is exactly in counter and encounter opposite direction not only in nephron loop of henle even in case of vasa recta also that is the same situation therefore as a result of these two right one is in vasa recta other one is in loop nephron so this could be this is possible concentrating the urine itself against 300 milli osmolar human being excretes 1200 milli osmolar urine itself fine what is osmolarity first that is the concentration of ions or particles present in the urine itself let us suppose in a solution always we come across a solvent and a solute a solute is that is being dissolved a solvent that dissolves a solute is called as a solvent these two are collectively called as solution likewise in a urine right in urine the concentration of the components right these components includes urea uric acid or any other particle that is in soluble form the concentration of ions or particles present in the urine makes osmolarity of that urine itself or the total number of moles in 1 liter molarity right that is the fraction molar fraction that is the right remember this is according to chemistry right the arrangement of this nef nephron right uh, facilitated the counter current exchange multiplier mechanism in organisms so the urine formation includes three stages three steps it is divided into ultra filtration ultra filtration selective reabsorption tubular secretion
right the urine formation is by means of counter current multiplier mechanism right i can say urine formation by counter current multiplier exchange mechanism yes the urine formation has been divided into three stages ultrafiltration tubule or uh, selective reabsorption and uh, tubular secretion the arrangement of limbs right that is in the arrangement of limbs in exactly opposite direction the movement of flow is opposite in this is in opposite direction right this is the cortex region this one is medullary region medulla again this is cortex right uh, can you consider this will be like this nephron right cortex medulla region again cortical region so the arrangement strategic arrangement of the descending loop this is the descending loop this one is ascending loop so the arrangement as a result of the fluid movement in opposite direction so this creates a counter current right this ultimately will result in concentration of the urine itself right first remember in ultra filtration under the pressure high pressure right what happens exactly is in bowman's capsule right already we had a discussion about these bowman's capsule glomerulus etc right in this area there exist a pressure ultra pressure high pressure exist in between bowman's hydrostatic pressure right there is a hydrostatic pressure in bowman's capsular region then there is colloidal osmotic pressure fluid pressure right as a result of this pressure this would result in net filtration blood will be filtered right this filtrate enters into the renal tubule itself as a result of difference in between afferent and efferent arterioles as afferent is afferent is having larger diameter when compared to efferent arterio ar arteriole there occur some gradient as a result of this gradient the fluid comes out from the fenestrations of the capillary network these are having endothelial linings in between there are empty spaces from these empty spaces components comes out even it includes right it includes components like glucose right amino acids or proteins like albumin even right it also includes vitamins several electrolytes like minerals like phosphates carbonates sulfates sodium chloride hippuric acid uric acid urea oxalic acid citric acid so the creatinine so these compounds right almost it this is called as primary filtrate or primary urine means this is not exactly true urine as it contains several biologically important compounds that are essential again they are usually reabsorbed in other parts of the nephron itself during the course of urine formation itself this is primary filtrate as a result of filtration in the glomerulus region and even in the final like bowman's capsule region this results in formation of primary filtrate however 99% of the primary filtrate will be again reabsorbed already we had a discussion so the filtration rate itself is almost right it generates 180 liters of primary filtrate or urine per day again 99% is absorbed so that on average 1.5 to 1.8 liters of urine will be formed finally what is the fate of this leftover almost 99% is again reabsorbed itself right under the high pressure under high pressure right because of this pressure right pressure will be more from this afferent right when it comes to efferent drainage is very low drain right, draining out right exit itself is gradual therefore as a result of the pressure build up it get right uh, leaks into the bowman's capsule this is called as ultra filtration filtration of the blood under high pressure in this uh, renal capsule is called as ultra filtration
ఇక్కడ మామూలుగా ఏంటంటే గలనం గాలనము వడగట్టబడడము అఫరెంట్ ఇఫరెంట్ ఆర్టీరియోల్స్ యొక్క వ్యాసార్థంలో తేడా ఉండడము దీంట్లో అఫరెంట్ లోపల రక్తం వేగంగా ప్రయాణించడము ఇఫరెంట్కి వచ్చేటప్పటికి వ్యాసార్థం తక్కువగా ఉంది కనుక మెల్లగా ప్రయాణించడం వల్ల ఇక్కడ రక్తం కొంతసేపు ఉండాల్సి వస్తుంది ఇవి అనేక శాఖోపశాఖలుగా చీలిన ఆర్టీరియోల్స్ ధమనికలు వీటి లోపల ఎండో తీలియల్ లైనింగ్ మధ్యన స్పేసెస్ ఉండటం వల్ల ఆ ఫెనస్ట్రేషన్స్ ఓపెనింగ్స్ నుంచి ఈ ఫిల్టరేట్ అనేది బయటకు వస్తుంది ఎందుకంటే వీటిపైన ప్రెషర్ ఉంది దీని గ్లోమెరలార్ బౌమాన్స్ హైడ్రోస్టాటిక్ ప్రెషర్ అన్నాము ఈ లేదా గ్లోమెరలార్ ప్రెషర్ ఈ ప్రెషర్ వల్ల ఇది బౌమాన్స్ క్యాప్సూల్ లోపలికి వస్తుంది బౌమాన్స్ క్యాప్సూల్ కూడా పొడోసైట్లు అనే కణాల చేత ఆవరించబడి ఉంది రైట్ ఇది అత్యంత పీడనం వద్ద అత్యంత పీడనం ప్రభావం వల్ల ఫిల్టరేషన్ జరిగి ఇది ఏర్పడుతుంది కనుక దీన్ని అల్ట్రా ఫిల్టరేషన్ అంటాం దెన్ అగైన్ మోర్ దెన్ నైన్టీ నైన్ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రైమరీ ఫిల్టరేట్ ఈస్ అగైన్ రీఅబ్జార్బ్డ్ ఇన్ ద రీనల్ ట్యూబ్యూల్ రైట్ ఇన్ పిసిటి డిసిటి అండ్ కలెక్టింగ్ ట్యూబ్యూల్స్ ఇట్ సెల్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ సెలెక్టివ్ రీఅబ్జార్బ్షన్ నాట్ ఆల్ ద కాంపౌండ్స్ ఆర్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఓన్లీ ఎ ఫ్యూ కాంపౌండ్స్ విల్ బి రీఅబ్జార్బ్డ్ ఇన్ ఎ సెలెక్టివ్ మేనర్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ అకార్డింగ్లీ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ కాంపౌండ్స్ లైక్ గ్లూకోజ్ vitamins amino acids right they are usually said to be high threshold substances means these are the compounds that are completely reabsorbed they are useful compounds glucose amino acids right uh, vitamins even bicarbonates they are usually reabsorbed itself these are called, these are called as high threshold substances similarly there are some substances that are not at all reabsorbed at all for example creatinine uric acid so they are not at all useful i mean these are the by products etc therefore there is no question of reabsorption of these substances hence they are called as a threshold substances in between right there are some substances that are absorbed to some extent low threshold substances right on the basis of this compounds are classified into high threshold substances low threshold substances and a threshold substances so this reabsorption is always in a selective manner therefore this is called as selective reabsorption right ikkada endu anante కేవలం కొన్ని రకాల పదార్థాలు మాత్రమే పునఃశోషించబడతాయి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ గ్లూకోజ్ అనేది ఉపయోగకరమైంది విటమిన్లు అమైనో ఆమ్లాలు బైకార్బొనేట్లు ఇవి పూర్తిగా మళ్ళీ పునఃశోషించబడతాయి యూరి యూరిక్ ఆమ్లం కానీ క్రియాటినైన్ కానీ ఆక్సలైట్స్ కానీ ఉపయోగకరమైనవి కావు వీటి నెత్తి పరిస్థితులు కూడా మళ్ళీ పునర్ పునఃశోషణ అనేది జరగదు అందుకని వీటిని ఏ త్రెషోల్డ్ సబ్స్టెన్స్ ఈ మధ్యలో ఉండేవి కొన్ని రకాల కొన్ని సందర్భాల్లో విటమిన్స్ లాంటివి రైట్ లో త్రెషోల్డ్ సబ్స్టెన్సెస్ అవి మళ్ళీ పునఃశోషించబడవచ్చు తక్కువ మోతాదులో రైట్ సో రిమంబర్ అగైన్ ట్యూబ్యులార్ సీక్రెషన్ సో ద రీనల్ ట్యూబ్యూల్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఇన్వాల్వ్డ్ ఇన్ సీక్రెషన్ ఆఫ్ సమ్ కాంపనెంట్స్ లైక్ ప్రొటాన్స్ ఆర్ పొటాషియం అయాన్స్ బైకార్బనేట్స్ దేర్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ ట్యూబ్యులార్ సీక్రెషన్ సీక్రెషన్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ కాంపోనెంట్స్ ఇన్ టు ద రీనల్ ట్యూబ్యూల్ అల్టిమేట్లీ రిజల్ట్స్ ఇన్ రెగ్యులేషన్ ఆఫ్ యాసిడ్ బేస్ బ్యాలెన్స్ హోమియోస్టాసిస్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఇక్కడ మనకి కొన్ని రకాల పదార్థాలు ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ప్రోటాన్స్ ఎసిడిటీ ఎక్కువ ఉందనుకోండి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ బాడీ లోపల ఎసిడిక్ నేచర్ ఉంది మెటబాలిక్ ఎసిడోసిస్ అలాంటప్పుడు ప్రోటాన్లు అనేవి బయటికి పంపబడతాయి లేదు ఆల్కలోసిస్ కండిషన్ ఉంది రైట్ బైకార్బొనేట్ పునఃశోషించబడతాయి ప్రోటాన్లు పునఃశోషించబడతాయి బైకార్బొనేట్లు బయటకు పంపబడతాయి అంటే ఇక్కడ ఏమవుతుంటే ఎసిడిటీ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ప్రోటాన్ కాన్సన్ట్రేషన్ ఎక్కువగా ఎంత మాత్రం అవసరం అయినప్పుడు ప్రోటాన్స్ సీ స్రవించబడతాయి లేదు బాడీ లోపల బైకార్బొనేట్స్ ఎక్కువగా ఉండే ఆల్కలైన్ కండిషన్ నుండి ఎసిడిటీ తక్కువ ఉన్నప్పుడు ప్రోటాన్లు పునఃశోషించబడతాయి ఇక్కడ ఏమవుతుంటే యాసిడ్ బేస్ రెగ్యులేషన్ బై అబ్జార్బింగ్ ప్రోటాన్స్ అండ్ బైకార్బొనేట్స్ ఇన్ ద రినల్ ట్యూబ్యూల్ ఇట్ సెల్ సో ఈ మూడు దశలను మనం యూరిన్ ఫార్మేషన్లో ఉన్నట్టు చెప్పుకుంటాము so right when it comes to the urine formation by counter current mechanism it was explained best by this counter current hypothesis right remember this descending loop is permeable right this is there is a difference in permeability also the descending loop is permeable to water right when this primary filtrate from these right primary filtrate means right that is formed at 
Bowman's capsule, right? This is formed at the renal capsule itself. Let just suppose imagine for a while. So as the descending limb is permeable to water, therefore water will be reabsorbed all along the descending limb of the loop of Henle. Therefore, what happens? So reabsorption, primary filtrate, whatever, whatever the primary filtrate that is having the water, that will be reabsorbed into the medullary region of the kidney or interstitium of the kidney. Likewise, right, this way, into this region, medullary region, water absorption occurs in this region. Therefore, it becomes more concentrated. Let's suppose this is a 300 milli osmolar in cortex region. That is the normal concentration, isotonic, that are having equal concentration with the serum. At 300, as a result of reabsorption of water, gradually the concentration increases, right? Ultimately, by the end, when it reaches the cortex region in the downward part of the kidney, it becomes a 1200 milli osmolar, means primary filtrate became more concentrated itself. As descending limb is permeable only to water, not to electrolytes like sodium, potassium, etc. As a result of this, it becomes more concentrated. Similarly, right when it is bypassing through this loop of Henle, again it enters into this ascending limb. Remember, this ascending limb is having two regions. Right, this ascending limb, some of the ascending limb is thicker, some is thin. Okay, anyhow. This ascending limb is permeable to salts, electrolytes like sodium chloride. This is not at all permeable for water. Right? Therefore, water remains in the ascending limb itself as the fluid moves along towards the cortex region itself. Again, sodium chloride salts will be again reabsorbed in the ascending limb of the endless uh, loop, nephron itself. Therefore, again it becomes, let's suppose, previously this is 1200 milli osmolar, right? Remember, previously solute concentration was very high, solvent is very low, but this time you are selectively removing, again you are removing solute so that what is happening? It is moving towards hypotonic, again it becomes something, right, uh, 300 milli osmolar. Just there is an exchange. Reabsorption of water in descending, reabsorption of salts in ascending loop. This achieves nothing. Again, it becomes 300 milli osmolar. So, in the cortical region, again, the concentration is in isotonic with the body fluid itself. In ascending limbs, salts are reabsorbed strictly, right? Only salts are reabsorbed, right? In the medullary region, I mean, this is in interstitial region. This is the interstitial region in between, right? In the space present in between two successive nephrons is interstitial. Interstitial means space present in between cells. Interstitial space is the space, right? That is present in between successive adjacent cells itself. The fluid present in the interstitial is called as interstitial fluid or extracellular fluid. This is also the same. This is the interstitial. Now, the filtrate is absorbed into the interstitium of the medulla itself so that this absorbs right more water this is the descending limb is right permeable for water therefore this interstitium absorbs more water when the primary filtrate is moving through this descending loop similarly when it is moving in the ascending loop it draws electrolytes salts only so finally it opens into collecting that so, collecting duct, right, into collecting duct, water enters, right. So, from there, this enters into vasa recta. So, the water passes down in the collecting duct. When this water is moving through this collecting duct, again, water reabsorption occurs. Reabsorption of water occurs into interstitial space by osmosis, remember. So, in the collecting duct, water reabsorption is always by means of osmosis itself. So, that osmosis occurs. As a result of that, more and more amount of water enters into the interstitium of the medulla region or kidney itself. So, remember, in this region, 
some amount of urea is also leaked right into the lower part of the collecting duct right in collecting ducts right when it is if this is the collecting duct let's suppose when this primary filtrate is again moving in this direction water will be again reabsorbed into the interstitium so water reabsorption occurs into the medulla portion or interstitial region of the kidney itself but remember when it is moving through this collecting duct in addition to that intentionally some amount of the urea is also leaked right this is leaked into the interstitium at the lower most part right this is the lower part of the collecting duct so at the base right at the lower part of the collecting duct some amount of the urea will also be reabsorbed into the interstitium or medullary region this is again by right this increases osmolarity right because it is a solute right it dissolves in primary filtrate na therefore it increases osmolarity or the concentration of solute again increases so that again when by the time it reaches the bottom region again the concentration becomes 1200 milli osmolar so that again from 300 again it becomes 1200 milli osmolar by the time when it enters into the right the lower most part of the collecting duct itself remember there are some organisms where trimethyl amine oxide will be retained in some of the fishes itself right this is about uh, ascending and descending loop plus collecting duct where right a selective reabsorption of water in descending only solves in ascending water in collecting duct itself so that it becomes more concentrated as you are going on removing the solvent from the solution what happens solute concentration automatically increases thereby this isotonic becomes hypertonic or more concentrated so when it reaches this downward region that is the uh, lower most part of the collecting duct the primary filtrate becomes more concentrated itself in addition to this there is another structure vasa recta so the in this vasa recta also there occurs the same phenomena right this is right uh, peritubular arteries are there efferent arteriole right after efferent arteriole exits bowman's capsule this glomerulus then it divides redivides it branches rebranches around every nephron itself so that it forms peritubular artery network around these so right these are the arteries imagine for a while these are the peritubular artery network right again they join again it is also the movement of the fluid is exactly in opposite direction again so the descending loop moves to renal medullary region right this is usually it moves to medulla region medulla means that is the middle portion or interstitial portion where reabsorption occurs as you know whenever loop of henle is uh, uh, present in the medullary region then only water can be reabsorbed right this is the same so in vasa recta the descending loop moves to renal medullary region itself whereas the ascending loop is right it moves towards renal cortex right the outermost is the cortex region so this is ascending loop is towards cortex region this one is the medulla region so the descending loop loses water similar to descending loop of nephron so this loses water but salts are gained so this loses water right it loses water but again salts are gained into the interstitium salts will be reabsorbed into the interstitium region itself not water itself water is reabsorbed into the interstitium region in the collecting duct area itself but when it comes to vasa recta region water is not at all reabsorbed only salts are gained in the interstitial region itself so as a result of these right uh, 
it goes from 300 to 1200 milli osmolar itself yes remember when the blood flow takes turn when the blood flow takes turn to cortex region in the ascending loop right in this ascending loop what happens sodium chloride again diffuses back into the interstitium that's what i am saying in this region always salts are reabsorbed so there is a gain of salts are salts are reabsorbed as you know once the salts are reabsorbed what happens invariably solvent follows solutes once sodium chloride is reabsorbed again some amount of the water remains itself means again some amount of the water follows the sodium chloride path again it enters into the interstitium so that again water conservation occurs on the other hand salts are also being conserved itself right urea is also intentionally reabsorbed once some amount of the urea has been reabsorbed into the interstitium so that some amount of the water again remains in the medulla region or kidney region so that again what happens once urea is reabsorbed into this region water also follows water also follows the path of sodium chloride and again water more amount of water will be required for maintenance of isotonic condition in the interstitium due to the reabsorption of the urea itself thereby it becomes hyper concentrated or hypertonic with with respect to the body itself right in the is pct region in proximal convoluted tubule region right under the influence of ciliated cuboidal epithelium reabsorption occurs almost 60 to 70% or even more than 80% of the reabsorption occurs in the pct region itself this is said to be obligatory reabsorption itself so that water follows the absorption of minerals itself so that there is a reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule itself again in the distal convoluted tubule there are hormones like anti diuretic hormone adh or vasopressin hormone this anti diuretic hormone right it prevents diuresis that is formation of urine or it usually retains water it right it increases the blood value by retaining water or by absorbing water itself so this anti diuretic hormone is secreted from pituitary gland but of course this anti diuretic hormone is released by posterior part of the pituitary gland posterior lobe but synthesis occurs in the anterior part by means of hypophyseal portal system right uh, there are three portal systems often i explains hepatic portal system right uh, that ends in liver right from the elementary canal small intestine renal portal system that opens into the kidney for filtration of the blood where auricles are not completely separated this is present only in the organisms where incomplete separation of auricular chambers third one is hypophyseal portal system this hypophysis right so the anterior lobe synthesizes anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin and even acetocin hormone but they are stored in the posterior lobe they are transported into this one by means of hypophyseal tract itself okay anyhow now this anti diuretic hormone it re it stimulates absorption of water under the influence of this hormone water will be absorbed or vasopressin this results in vasopressin right this usually decreases the diameter of the blood vessel therefore the blood flow renal flow decreases as a result of that the amount of blood being filtered comes down so urine formation will also be comes down so that these are di right uh, anti diuretic that opposes formation of urine itself right uh, other one is aldosterone hormone aldosterone hormone is a hormone that is involved in reabsorption of minerals itself this is a mineralocorticosteroid salts will be reabsorbed itself anti diuretic hormone and aldosterone hormone regulates kidney functioning let's suppose whenever this anti diuretic hormone is absent right insufficient that results in diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus 
right uh, the characteristic features are frequent urination right once an individual loses frequent urine frequently it results in uh, thirst polydipsia polyuria po frequent urination polyuria polydipsia even polyphasia right these are the symptoms of uh, diabetes insipidus it is not at all lethal right just this is due to a disorder associated with insufficient levels of anti diuretic or vasopressin hormone itself when the osmotic pressure of urine is more in right uh, in the when the osmotic pressure is more in urine i mean this is hypertonic it will be released so that you water will be reabsorbed again so this renin sorry aldosterone is involved in regulation of minerals in addition to that there are some other like justa glomerular apparatus already we had a discussion in detail about the justa glomerular apparatus the modified cells of dct region called as macula densa and the opposite cells justa glomerular cells that are part of the afferent arteriole they are collectively called as justa glomerular apparatus this releases renin right so this renin substance usually right it activates right uh, this renin in turn converts angiotensinogen a compound angiotensinogen 1 angiotensinogen 1 is an inactive compound right uh, this is again in turn connected converted into angiotensin angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensinogen angiotensin 1 angiotensin 2 then angio tensin 2 now this in turn activates aldosterone that right. popularly this is usually referred as ras system right now these justa glomerular cells secretes renin now this renin converts precursor inactive gymogenic form angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 right angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1 by the renin itself right this is the only step that is catalyzed that is catalyzed by renin itself later there is an enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme right this angiotensin converting enzyme ace 1 this angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin right one into angiotensin 2 right this is ace angiotensin converting enzyme now this angiotensin 2 angiotensin active form now it acts on adrenal gland yes remember adrenal gland is again located on the kidney itself this is called as suprarenal gland because it is present at the superior most part of the renal structure suprarenal gland are adrenal above the renal right this especially this stimulates the cortex region as you know this cortex region secretes mineralocorticosteroids glucocorticosteroids and sex corticosteroids so now this aldosterone is a mineralocorticosteroid this angiotensin in turn stimulates cortex region cortical region of the kidney, adrenal gland this in turn releases aldosterone hormone aldosterone is a mineralocorticosteroid now this mineral corticosteroid stimulates reabsorption of minerals in the renal tubule itself right angiotensinogen becomes angiotensin 1 by the action of renin again angiotensin 1 becomes angiotensin 2 by the action of angiotensin converting enzyme right this angiotensinogen 2 again it acts on aldosterone aldosterone in turn stimulates reabsorption of minerals itself so that this ras system renin angiotensin aldosterone system so this renin angiotensin aldosterone system always it enhances reabsorption of water and minerals however this ras system is inhibited by alcohol so alcohol consumption alcohol inhibits renin angiotensin uh, aldosterone system therefore what happens once it inhibits mineralocorticosteroids 
right so individual loses even water also it also inhibits adh so that what happens individuals right uh, person drunken person alcoholics usually they lose enormous amount of water and electrolytes or minerals in the form of urine so this usually sometimes even this would result in death of the individual also right the so called hangover the popular word among in the society is again dehydration the hangover is again due to the alcohol consumption right this alcohol is having inhibitory effect on reabsorption or conservation of water therefore what happens individuals they tend to lose more amount of water that results in headache severe headache that is called as hangover itself right this is another even coffee or tea there are also diuretics diuretics means compounds that enhances urine formation or compounds that usually favors uh, formation of more amount of water or that usually stimulates more urine formation itself that is the reason right knowingly or unknowingly most of the people usually avoid coffee or tea while they are in journey itself right this coffee or tea etc they are diuretics even remember there are some drugs that are usually used to reduce body weight itself they are also diuretics right so these diuretics always they enhance they stimulate loss of water so that that would re result in uh, loss of body weight etc there are some treatments right in addition to these there is some other atrial natriuretic factor or peptide atrial natriuretic factor or peptide yes atrial means this is the atrium part right a heart auricles right these auricular part right atrium is having a specialized structure that secretes atrial natriuretic factor or atrial natriuretic peptide so when it is released right it usually decreases blood volume whenever the blood pressure increases whenever the amount of the blood increases or the right uh, atrial natriuretic factor will be released so that it usually lowers blood volume by reabsorption yes once this anf atrial atrium natri natrium sodium uretic right that is usually having water right okay sodium and water so this atrial natriuretic factor usually favors loss of water and sodium salt so that this stim this usually reduces the blood value once an individual loses some amount of the water from the blood what happens blood value comes down or blood pressure also comes down right these receptors there are some receptors that stimulates atrial natriuretic factor or atrial natriuretic protein itself so this always right uh, stimulates loss of water and uh, sodium itself natrium is the latin name of sodium na natri uretic means urine right in addition to this right there are some other mechanisms that are involved in regulation of homeostasis that is maintenance of electrolyte water balance that right? these kidneys are uh, organs of homeostasis right yes in addition to this right, there are some diseases associated with uh, right the excretory system renal calculi kidney stones renal stones renal calculi right uh, citrullinemia right uh, originally there are many diseases associated with urea cycle absence or deficiency right absence means complete absence deficiency means insufficient presence so that would result in impairment of every step in the urea cycle itself that we had a discussion right uh, i am not going to the details right every enzyme in the urea cycle itself would result in certain metabolic disorder associated with urea itself right one is 
renal calculi diabetes insipidus that includes uremia albuminuria right glycosuria fructosuria hematuria right there are many more right yes restricted to syllabus renal calculi formation of stones right these are usually calcium right oxalate so right one has to drink required amount of water in order to prevent the formation of the renal calculi or renal stones calculi calcium so these are calcium oxalates silicates so right this usually this results in damage of nephrons let's suppose this is a nephron this is another nephron right depending upon right the water consumption right for example whenever individual fails to take required amount of water that would result in formation of more amount of uric acid or oxalate crystals so presence of these uric acid crystals or oxalates suddenly would result in damage to the nephrons remember once there is a damage to a nephron it is never it is going to be regenerated again like a neuron so that day by day the functioning of the kidney comes down so this renal calculi it requires sometimes it requires surgical removal even lithotripsy right uh, just by blasting may fragmenting the stone itself so that again the fragmented pores comes out via diuresis i mean uh, urination itself renal calculi diabetes insipidus deficiency of anti diuretic hormone polydipsia frequent urination followed by uh, frequent uh, thirst polydipsia polyphasia right uh, sleep disturbances etc glomerulonephritis always remember in medical language ites inflammation itis means inflammation glomerulonephritis glomerular part of the nephron whenever there is an inflammation in these region this is said to be glomerulonephritis reasons are many right even there are certain uh, autoimmune disorders that affects the kidney also even cell mediated immune response is also there right accumulation of these anti and antibody complex sometimes damage organs especially organs like kidney hypertension also damages kidney right uh, antibiotics also exhibits uh, the effect some negative impact on the kidney functioning itself right uh, renal failure whenever kidney fails to discharge its function to filter up blood it is said to be renal failure this requires transplantation so in order to carry out a transplantation that right, there must be some compatibility that is first blood group must be similar and in between the donor and recipient right host versus graft so in between the two persons right the person who is going to right receiver and the donor in between the donor and receiver compatibility blood group must be same right if at all blood group is same again there should be matching with respect to major histo compatibility complex msc complex right uh, then the person the donor should be free from diseases he should be free from emotional imbalances etc then only right uh, it will be carried further once uh, transplantation has been carried out individuals are usually maintained in immunosuppressive condition for a couple of days they will be maintained in icu conditions by giving immune suppressive drugs so that immune system will be right suppressed to some extent in order to prevent uh, a rejection of the grafted tissue or kidney itself remember in transplantation the damaged kidney never will be removed from the body itself it will be there the grafted the new kidney right the grafted kidney will be always uh, grafted at the adjacent uh, side of that existing kidney itself uremia right uh, albuminuria glycosuria these are also some of the disorders right the presence of iron uh, presence of albumin protein in urine is albuminuria 
ప్రజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ గ్లూకోజ్ గ్లైకోసూరియా డయాబెటీస్ ఫ్రక్టోసీరియా ఫ్రక్టోస్ హిమటూరియా ప్రజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ బ్లడ్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ కిడ్నీ ఫంక్షనింగ్ అండ్ రిమంబర్ ద ఆల్ ద యూరియా సైకిల్ ఎన్జైమ్స్ డిఫిషియన్సీ ఆర్ ఇన్సఫిషియంట్ వుడ్ ఆల్సో రిజల్ట్ ఇన్ సెవరల్ డిజార్డర్స్ రైట్ దర్ ఈజ్ ఏ మెథడ్ డయాలసిస్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ ఆర్టిఫిషియల్ కిడ్నీ right whenever normal kidney fails to filter to isolate toxic toxicants toxic material from the kidney blood right then it requires a dialysis by using this dialyzer dialysis blood can be filtered so first blood it is connected to the individual via artery blood is always drawn right it is connected to a dialysis instrument this dialysis instrument is having the composition right this is usually let's suppose this is having the composition similar to the plasma protein let's suppose this is a dialyzer bag this is having the composition that is absolutely similar to the plasma except proteins large sized proteins right now this instrument dialyzer is connected to the patient via artery always remember now blood is connected the individual is connected to the dialyzer via an artery right by again it has to be mixed with some anticoagulant anticoagulant has to be given heparin a natural heparin like anticoagulant is given it is connected to the artery artery now this blood flows remember in between the spaces right these are made of cellophane membrane when this fluid is moving through these chamber such a dialyzer so these large sized proteins right etc they will be absorbed into this interstitium itself so that the composition of the blood will be similar it is made to similar to the plasma itself so that large sized proteins toxic material will be retained absorbed into this region again blood is uh, right it is again connected to the person via vein this time so that this is a dialyzer artificial dialyzer right uh, nowadays right it is in, uh, increasing day by day because of lifestyle disorders diet uh, pollution several problems itself right uh, this is dialysis